Hello again, folks. It's Tom McLaughlin. I'm coming to you from the 2018 States and Nation Policy Summit here on Friday, and I'm here with Henry Olson from the Ethics and Public Policy Center. And you were just a part of the uh, first ever Bradley panel today at ALEC. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Very insightful, and I was glad to learn from Rick and Taryn and, from, and Ramesh. Great. So uh, I kind of want to go a little bit deeper on some of the things that you were talking about, mm -hmm. particularly your concept of uh, political zoology. <laughs> so the rhinos and the tigers and yeah. the elephants. And Can you go a little deeper on that for yeah, me? Sure. From a Republican and conservative perspective, there are basically three types of people who you want to attract. You want to attract the base Republicans, the elephants. They're concerned about the sorts of things you know Republicans are concerned about. Uh, then, though, you've got two swing groups, and they provide the majority. One is rhinos, Republicans in name only. But they're moderate, upper-income suburbanites who tend to be favorable towards business, but tend to be more culturally liberal and more open to government involvement. Uh, and then you've got tigers. Trump is great Republicans. They tend to be blue-collar voters who used to be Democrats, not so open to the idea that businessmen are the pillars of their economy, but very open to private sector job development and getting government out of the way so long as people in need are taken care of. So they kind of have significant difference on public, how public policy should be handled then? Uh, any large 51% coalition will have differences. The question is where do you find the sweet spot that everyone can agree on? Great. So uh, you think that this kind of these two divisions within the group had an effect on the, the past election cycle? Oh, absolutely. The reason the Democrats took the House and gained so many seats in state legislatures is because of the rhinos, that they were upset at President Trump and decided to take that anger out on members of his party up and down the ballot. And you can see it in the districts that flipped. It's places where uh, Romney might have won by 23 points. Uh, right. yeah. uh, but Democrats now win those areas. Uh, and that, uh, on the other hand, the reason the Republicans gained in the Senate is because the Tigers with Trump off the ballot still voted for Republicans. And uh, so Democrats who six years ago did well in rural areas got annihilated because they are no longer part of a party that the Tigers think represent them. Right. Um, so my last question for you is, uh, what do you think the way forward is that, uh, then now? So what do you think happens yeah. going forward in the 2020 with this kind of new political landscape in, well, in the Republican you've Party? You've got two coalitions that are entirely new that the party leadership, I don't think, in either side knows exactly what to do with. That after the election, uh, Molly Hemingway overheard a leading Democrat on the Acela train uh, talk about, you know, our majority now depends on Rockefeller Republicans. That was his term for the rhinos. Right. Um, uh, now we can't be the representative of the working class. Well, they have to figure out how to keep people who like Mitt Romney and people like uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who think that Nancy Pelosi isn't liberal enough. They need to keep them in the same coalition. On the other hand, you've got the Republicans. If they try and just go after the suburbanites who used to be Republicans without remembering the blue collar people who voted for Trump, they'll just switch minorities. What they need to do is add rather than subtract. Right. Henry, I want to thank you for joining me today and kind of breaking down the uh, monolithic politics, uh, kind of just breaking it down into mm -hmm. groups and really making it simple. So thank you. Thank you. All right.